I figure the depths of winter in my homeland of the continental United States is a good time to shift our focus to Hawaii and make a visit to the pansexual pig god and the famous volcano goddess Pele's sometimes lover and sometimes enemy, Kamapua'a. Kamapua'a's story starts with the daughter of a Hawaiian queen named Hina. Hina was married to an aging king on the island of Oahu, Olopana. She spent a great deal of time with her much younger brother-in-law, Kahiki Ula. When Hina gave birth to a son, Olopana refused to recognize the child as his own and declared that the boy's name would be Kamapua'a, which means hog child. Perhaps needless to say, Hina eventually left Olopana and married Kahiki Ula. Kamapua'a grew up to be muscular, tall, and handsome with sparkling dark eyes, but he had a strange physical defect. He had bristles down his back that he had to hide with a cloak. Luckily, Kamapua'a also became divine or semi-divine. In the terms of Hawaiian religion, Kamapua'a became a kupua. The term kupua is maybe best translated as demigod. Kupuas could change shape into plants or animals, but they also had a human form. This was just as true for Kamapua, who could change form into a pig, fish, or plants. In one story, Kamapua battled the half-dog, half-human warrior, Kuiliolua, and killed him by turning into weeds and stuffing himself into his rival's throat. If that's not a case for Kamapua being made into the next big superhero or supervillain, I don't know what is. Anyway, Kamapua was also traditionally worshipped as a god. He was associated with the fertility deity Lono. Specifically, Kamapua was a god of agriculture, rain, and unrestrained masculine sexuality. Plus, he was something of a patron for sweet potato farmers. Probably in no small part because the sweet potato was traditionally associated with Kamapua'a's genitals. Despite being a god, or a mostly god, Kamapua'a still had a rough childhood. Forsaken by his presumed father, Kamapua'a took to the mountains and, with the aid of a gang that rallied around him, raided Olopana's farmlands and chicken coops for months. His friends from his childhood helped him escape when he was captured, and in revenge, he murdered Olopana. Kamapua then tried to find a new father figure in Kahiki Ula. His stepfather rejected him as well, and no version of the story I could find talks about his mother's feelings on all this. But apparently they weren't that warm either. In any case, Kamapua gave up civilized life and instead dedicated himself to ripping up farmland and stealing food. In this way, Kamapua became the real personification of Hawaii's wild pigs. However, he not only enjoyed chaos and destruction and food, but also sex. Now, Kamapua'a's most famous love story was a heterosexual one, his love and hate passion for Pele. There are many different versions of her story. One quoted by Pamela Frierson in her book The Burning Island goes, The pig god lured by the smoke of Pele, comes up to the edge of Kalua Kaldra, arriving on the eastern side where the rainforest marches right up to the rim, and huge gray rain clouds often hover. Here he assumes his resplendent human form and calls to Pele, who is slumbering. Pele replies, one might wake up for a man, but imagine waking up for a hog. Kamapua's chance, asking her to come with him to Puna. Pele responds with, You are Kama of the noisy anus with the penis attached to the abdomen. Kamapua replies, Puna is darkened by the bitterly cold rains, made foul smelling by the smoke of Pele. Pele sends her fires after the pig god. His bristles are burned off and the foul odor spreads all over the islands. Kamapua changes to a rain cloud and summons plants to invade Kalua. Pele and her family retreat into the volcano where she summons more fire. The battle rages until Pele's lava devastates Puna. At last, Pele and Kamapua consummate after, quote, some prolonged and rather rough foreplay. For four days and nights, Kamapua and Pele make love, 
until the gods wonder if she will survive all this pig-like behavior. They ask a member of Pele's family, the goddess Kapo, who is also known as Kapo of the Wandering Vagina, to distract Kamapua'a, who chases her through the islands. Seizing her chance, Pele goes home. Afterwards, Pele and the pig god agree to live apart, dividing the islands between them. Kamapua'a is given the rainy parts of the islands, while Pele takes the dry lands. Pamela Frierson argues that the stories of Pele and Kamapuaha are an allegory for when the volcano Pele spews lava over the lands of Puna, while farmers are able to use the mineral-rich soil deposited by the volcanic eruption to grow excellent crops. A scholar of Hawaiian religion, John Charlot, actually describes the god as pansexual. As you might have noticed when Pele called out Kamapua'a's noisy anus. In some versions of the Pele Kamapua saga, Pele mocks Kamapua for having anal sex with men. Kamapua was also the lover of the mythical fisherman Niholeke and the sea god Limaloa. In one story, Kamapua's anus even has its own nickname, Gaping Above. In one account, Kamapua and Pele are bitter enemies who cannot outdo each other, so Pele sends two of her brothers to rough him up. Pua cashes in on a favor from the love god, Lanoikia Wia Wia Loa, who seduces the brothers. After several romps, they just completely forget the hit Pele put out on Kamapua. As much as he is known for one of the greatest tempestuous love stories in all of mythology, Kamapua clearly did not limit himself to just one gender. From a Western perspective, one might see Kamapua as a negative icon, connecting homosexuality to the chaotic and the uncivilized. I think that's a mistake, not to mention pretty Western-centric. Instead, from how I interpret the admittedly few stories I was able to find out about him, I would argue that Kamapua represents something deeper, more complex than our order-wildness binary. After all, the stories about him and his divine attributes also reflect anger against injustice, as well as humanity's defiance against even the most destructive outbursts of nature. I don't think it would be too much of a leap to also interpret Kamapua's unrestrained libido as representing sexuality as not just an unpredictable force, but also a liberating one.